other planets, Brad, Uranus, it's a bit different to the rest of them. It's rotated, it's rotating on its side. Now, why is that? We now have a potential explanation. Yeah, look, Uranus has always been this weird planet because he said it's rotating on its side and it's going backwards. So it's kind of going the opposite angle all the other planets do. Now, there's been a lot of ideas that have been put forth, but none of them have been that satisfactory because ultimately uh, the idea of either maybe Uranus got smacked, collided in by a, a dwarf planet or a moon doesn't explain why it's still similar in every other way to Neptune. So Neptune and Uranus are almost identical except the way the planets move. Now a new model has shown that maybe it's because of actually moons drifting away. So we know moons drifting away is very common for planets. Our moon is moving away about four centimeters per year, and that slightly changes the way the planet moves. It's slowing down our rotation. Uh, Jupiter does this, so does Saturn. And they showed that even a somewhat you know, smaller moon, something about a third the size of our moon drifting away, would kind of yank a little bit on Uranus, causing it to flip over and therefore spin on its side. And this is quite an important thing because we know this happens, we're seeing it kind of happening in Jupiter. We've measured it happening in our moon. And it also would solve the problems of other things that would be missing if a giant collision happened. So it could be a great discovery into a fairly common process, and that is moons moving around a planet and drifting away. Well, there you go. A fascinating explanation, and at least we know now why. Uh, Brad, a space where the Forecasting Centre has been inaugurated in Adelaide to help Australia's space industry prepare for space weather events. So what will the centre do? So, look, you know, the Bureau of Meteorology has been doing this for quite a while, but they've officially, as you said, formally opened this centre to bring a part a bigger focus of space weather forecasting. So just as we forecast weather here on Earth, and that can tell us, you know, how to be prepared. You know, is it going to rain? Is it going to be uh, sunny? Is it going to flood or have those storms in space? This is about saying when the solar storms erupt, and this happens quite often on the sun, is it going to hit the Earth? Is it going to affect infrastructure on the ground in Australia? or Australian infrastructure in space. And this is the key. It's focusing on Australian-based assets because space weather is a big deal. We have seen solar storms that have disrupted GPS networks. Bigger storms can disrupt other satellite networks like internet, even banking, uh, communications. And if it's really big, it can affect actually electrical systems on the Earth. So this is really saying this is becoming a bigger thing. And as space becomes a bigger part of our role, Australia needs a dedicated center just to monitor this. So it's a really important step and a good initiative by the federal government to say, look, you know, we can't ignore this. We're growing more and more dependent now. And we can't rely on overseas partners to do the forecasting and look out for Australia. We need to do it in house. Yeah, and it's good for Australia, as we know, uh, expanding uh, in the space industry. So it's good to have something local like that, no doubt. Now, Brad, the SpaceX Crew 5 mission launched early Thursday morning. What's the aim of the mission? So this is um, becoming quite regular for SpaceX now. They're doing these five to six month rotations on behalf of NASA. So where they send astronauts up, uh, they do experiments, conduct operations on the International Space Station. Which makes this one quite interesting is this is the first time, firstly, a Native American woman is going into space, the commander of the capsule, and somewhat quite important for nowadays, there's a Russian cosmonaut on board. So in the past, a lot of these missions, these kind of stays have been taking Americans, uh, Russians, and a few other countries together. Now, obviously, with the war in Ukraine, tensions have been high even in space. And we've seen Americans still going with the Russians on the Russian capsule, but this is the first time a Russian has gone on the SpaceX capsule. And so even with all the tensions on board, they're still finding ways of cooperating in space and advancing their cooperation in space. And so this both um, puts forth uh, the research and science interests of not just the US, but Japan with that Japanese astronaut and Russia on board. So it's as much a good sign for science as it is international peace and diplomacy. Good to hear. Brad Tucker, we do have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Take care.